today. We worship you, God. We thank you on today. We say hallelujah, hallelujah, right from where you are, in your living room, in your bedroom, in your garage, on your couch, wherever you are. Grab the people around you, push somebody next to you, and tell them to offer God praise, offer God hallelujah, because today is the day that changed everything for all of us. It changed the scope of the world, and it's fitting today that we are at an unprecedented time for an unprecedented season, because listen, we serve an unprecedented God, and so today we are making history, and so today I challenge you, find yourself on the right side of history today. Roll out of that bed, fall on your knees and tell God thank you. Roll out of that bed. Get up off of that couch and walk your living room. Tell God thank you. Tell God we praise you. We thank you today for what you did. We thank you for your sacrifice. We are in an unprecedented season. And this is the time for you to surrender everything you came in with. Nothing that is like God. Everything that you came in with, if it's not like God, you need to let it go. Put it at the feet of the cross today. We give you worship on this morning, God. We thank you for where you brought us from and how you have changed us. This is history today. All across this country, the church doors are closed, but the church is not closed. The buildings are closed, but the church is more alive than ever before. We are reaching more people, and today we reach out to heaven, we reach out to God today, right from where we are, in our respective places, and we offer God our very best on today, because despite what you might see around you, and despite what CNN is reporting, and despite the numbers, God is still God, God is still able, God is still in control, God is still worthy, God is still holding weight. God will do it. He will change it. This thing will end. And when it ends, we will need the church to stand up. We're going to need the worshipers to worship. We're going to need the intercessors to intercede. We're going to need the prayer warriors to get on their stands and get on the wall. We're going to need the ushers to usher. We're going to need the parking lot attendants to be prepared for the influx. It is revival time all over this country. And God, we glorify you today. 
We glorify you today. We don't care about the technical difficulties. There is one thing that we came to do. There is one thing that we came to do, and that is offer God our very best. There is one thing. We have one mind on today. We have one heart on today, and that is to tell God thank you. That is to tell God we owe you this praise today, God, and we say hallelujah. We say thank you. We give your name glory, and we give your name honor on today. We are thankful unto him. We bless your name today, God. Hallelujah. Church, we are in an unprecedented time. We are making history today. History. History in the making. When in the time have Easter Sunday come and you didn't have on your very best. You don't have on your hat. The new Jordans, the new sneakers. Got your little boy and little girl, the fancy suit and the fancy dress. When in time of history has that happened when we can't gather? Listen, God is saying the focus today needs to be on me. You didn't have a chance to go out and spend your little dollars on your clothes, so you didn't get a chance to get your Easter drip. And I'm sorry, but there is only one drip today that matters, and that is the drip of the blood that's coming down from the cross. And so God has your full attention on today because we're not turning around looking at who's coming in the door. We're not turning around to see what Johnny and them got on. We're not turning around to see what fancy clothes she done brought out this year. All we can focus on today is the power in the spirit of God. And so the drip that matters is the drip from the cross. It is the drip of the sweat that ran down as he hung there. So the nails put him on the cross, but love kept him on the cross. For you, and we're talking to you on today, and we thank God for it. We say hallelujah. We give you glory on today, God. Hallelujah. We're going to do something that we have never done in the church that I am aware of. We're going to participate in our communion, and we want you to grab your elements from wherever you are. We want you to participate. Grab your family. My family is here. My girls are here. This is a time unlike any other. But I believe that God is calling us back to him. He hit pause so he can get our attention. And we know that many are out there being affected in so many different ways by this virus and this pandemic. But God is in control. And we are turning our focus and our hearts to Calvary, to the place where everything began. God changed it all in three days. Give God six months and he can do something that is unprecedented. And so we're going to participate in our communion now. Grab your elements. Grab your family. Grab your people around you. Today is about love. The love from the cross. The love that God had. The love that God is reminding us of today that changed everything. That changed the whole trajectory of our history and our future. With just one look from Calvary, God saw us. With just one look from Calvary, he looked into our future. And today is about him. Today is about that sacrifice. Listen, the scripture says, while they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, God, we thank you for it. We thank you for the body. We thank you for it being broken for us. We thank you for the sacrifice that your son came and gave so that we might have life. We remember it today. He broke it. And gave it to his disciples. Saying, take it, eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup. He had given thanks. The juice, the blood represents whatever you're using. Milk, water, soda, what you have. Our focus is not on what it is. Our focus is on what it represents. It represents the blood. The blood that was shed, the blood that ran down on Calvary, that blood that still has power now, it will never lose its power. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never, it will never, somebody write in the comments, it will never lose its power. And so whatever you're using, it represents the blood on today. It represents the blood. It represents the love that Jesus had for you that kept him on the cross until you decided that you needed him. Until you came to the revelation that you needed this love that's unconditional, that's chasing you down, chasing you, fighting to your found. It represents the blood. He took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Grab your elements. Grab whatever you have. Grab your family. Grab what you have. And let us eat the body. Let us eat this bread. Let us eat this cracker. Whatever you have. If you made pancakes this morning, go in your kitchen and get a piece of that pancake. And let us eat together in remembrance of the love and the sacrifice that God has for us. Let us eat together. My family is here. Even my brother is here. Taking communion with us. It is an unprecedented time. Get on the right side of this history, people. Get on the right side of it. The blood, it will never lose its power. God is calling you back today. He is calling us back to him today. Grab your cup, the cup that represents the blood. Grab your milk. Grab your soda. Grab your juice. Grab whatever it is you have. Put it in your cup proud and thank God today for his blood, the blood that ran down. Let us drink together. We give you glory, God. We thank you today. We thank you today. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for the blood that ran down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. From day to day to day. It will never lose its power. And so whatever you are surrounded by now. You know what the interesting thing about the communion supper, the last supper, the meal? Jesus was surrounded on both sides of him. On one side, he's surrounded by a guy that's going to betray him. First chance he get. On the other side, he's surrounded by a guy that's going to betray him for money. Sold him out. On one side, sold him out when it got hard, when it got difficult. What did Jesus do? He pressed through. What did he do? He finished the task. What did he do? He ran all the way to it. Did he sit in comfort or did he chase after greatness? Hallelujah today. He chased after greatness because he knew in three days, he knew that the world would be forever changed. And he did it for you. No matter what you are surrounded by, the focus is still on Jesus. No matter what you are surrounded by, his focus is still on you. No matter what you are surrounded by, it will not overtake you. It is not greater or stronger than the love of God that is pulling on you today. So that prick you feel in your heart, that pull you feel in your heart, that is God calling you back to himself right now. This is a time never before seen in history, and you are a part of it. It is a privilege for you to be a part of it. We know you're suffering. We know you're hurting. But God says, I sent my son so you won't have to suffer for too long. I sent my son. You won't have to die. This is not going to kill you. I sent my son to sacrifice for you. So no matter what you are surrounded by, his focus is still on you because he's locked in on you. He's locked in on your life. So from Calvary, with just one look, he saw you. With just one look, he looked into your future. With just one look, looked into your life and began to pull you out of everything because of the blood. Yeah, you know the song it says, it reaches to the height. And then it flows. Hallelujah, the blood is flowing. And it's flowing right where you are, flowing under your house flowing under your car, flowing in your living room, flowing right where you are. It flows and it reaches. It's going to reach you. You can't run from it. You can't get away from it because that's how reckless God is today. His love belongs to you and it is a privilege today. And God, we thank you for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody clap your hands right where you are. Hallelujah to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Welcome. 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 Unprecedented. We just made history, and you are a part of it. We just made history, church, and you're on the right side of it now. Hallelujah. So no matter what it was before, now it's different. No matter what it was before, you have an opportunity to come back to God. You have an opportunity for you and your entire household to be a part of the fold, for you and your entire family. You just changed history for all of you. You just switched it. You just turned it. Right in that moment, you just turned it. God was waiting for you to participate in it. Even with the soda, the milk, the water, whatever you use, it's transforming you now. And it's flowing, hallelujah. It's flowing to places you didn't even know needed it. It's flowing to places that's coming in your future because it flows. Hallelujah. You ever try to stop a flow? 
You never look at a stream or a river or an ocean and you ever try to stop the flow? What happens? The flow overpowers you. The flow overtakes it. Whatever obstacle you put in the way, the flow overtakes it. It goes around it. It goes under it. What does it do? The flow finds a way. Y'all better have me in here. The flow, it finds a way. So it's going to find its way to you on today, straight to your heart. Yeah, I'm not talking to anybody. I'm talking to just you. I'm talking to you. So you're receiving on today. You're receiving on today. It's flowing right to where you are. It's flowing to your children. You've been praying for them. You've been pulling on God for them. You've been pulling down heaven for them. It's flowing. It can't stop it. Nothing can stop the flow. You don't believe it? Run your water in your kitchen now and try to stop the flow. Put your hand on the faucet and hold it as tight as you can. What's going to happen? The flow is going to start popping out all the little cracks in your hand. Hallelujah. God can fill those cracks. He can fill those holes. Hallelujah. Y'all better stop in here. You better wake up in here. You are part of history. You are a part of history. Living history. You're living through it now. You're living through it. So now it's time. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's not just time to talk about it. It's time to live it. It's time to live it. It's time to live it now, people of God. It's time to live it. Hallelujah. Let's get to this message. Let's get to this message so we can let you go. Hallelujah. Stay with us. Don't fall asleep. The Spirit of God is flowing. Hallelujah. I feel it. I'm standing in my dining room. Look at it. You see it. I'm standing in my dining room. The Spirit of the Lord is flowing in this place. The power of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, is overtaking you right now. Hallelujah, I dare you. Grab the person you're sitting next to. Tell them, honey, baby, the power of God is flowing in this place. Hallelujah, the glory of God is flowing in this place, flowing through us. The glory cloud is resting above us. Hallelujah, the love of God today came to pierce all of it, cracking it all open. Hallelujah, to turn it all upside down, to turn it around. Hallelujah. The Bible says, John 19, 28 to 30, listen to what it says. The Bible says, later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. God Almighty, God, I thank you today. I thank you. Let's pray. Pray right where you are. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your manservant today. God, hide me behind the cross. Hide me behind the great spectacle of the cross, God, because it is your vision. It was you, God, that selected him and chose him to come and to die for us. And so hide me behind that glory. Hide me behind that revelation and speak directly to your people, God. I cannot come and give them anything unless you go before me, God, unless you send me, unless you fill me with your great anointing and great power. And so, God, send it to every living room. Send it to every job. Send it to every car, God. Send it to every phone, every device. God, send it to every neighborhood, every man, woman, child who has a heart to hear the word of the Lord today. God, speak to them and may they forever be transformed. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Hallelujah. You know, today is about the love of God. God's love is going to transform you. Hallelujah. God's love is going to transcend you when you feel limited. Hallelujah. But God's love is going to transport you. Hallelujah. When you feel depleted, it is about the love today. Listen to what the word says. Let her knowing that everything had been finished. You know, there's a time before all things were accomplished. Listen to what Jesus said. Listen to what the account in Luke. I've come to start a fire on this earth. How I wish it were blazing right now. I've come to change everything. Turn everything right side up. How I long for it to be finished. Do you think I have come to smooth things over and make everything nice? Not so. I've come to disrupt and confront. And so you're going to sit in comfort or are you going to run after greatness? You know, the love of God today that we're talking about will transport you when you feel depleted. 
It is a love that will provoke you. It was a time before everything was completed. It is a time when all things were completed. And God Almighty, there was a time after all things were completed. You know, there's a time when it is completed. God selected Jesus. You know, it was God's plan from the beginning. It was God's plan from the start to choose his son, to select his son. And he said in his mind, in God's infinite wisdom, I'm going to need something for my creation because I love them that much. And so there was a time before. And so Jesus knew what it was. He knew what the deal was. And he knew what he was coming to do. So he couldn't sit in comfort because he was chasing after greatness. And I'm challenging you today. You can no longer sit in comfort because comfort has now been redefined. Hallelujah. Your new normal has now become a new normal. And so you can no longer sit in comfort. You got to keep praying. You got to keep persistent. You got to keep pursuing. You got to keep producing because Jesus came especially for you. You know, it was God's plan the whole time, the whole time to select his son to come and to die for you. And so it was either you for eternity or Jesus for three hours. And God chose you. He chose you on the off chance that you would choose his son. And he is calling you back to him today. And so it was a time when all things were completed. But you know, there was a time that came after all things were accomplished. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus was the only one that came and did everything he did set out to do exactly. The only man in history to come and to do and to finish exactly what he started. My meat is to come and to pursue the will of God, perform the will of God, see it through to completion. Listen, people of God, you are in an unprecedented time in history. And so what was incomplete before you got to COVID? What did you leave incomplete before you got the shutdown? What did you leave incomplete? Y'all know some of your money is being affected and some of your resources being affected and money is the closest thing to our heart. But I promise you today, there are so many things that will have your attention and very little things will have your heart. Jesus told Mary and Martha, listen, you fussing about a whole lot, but there is one thing that is needed today. And she chose that right thing at the feet of Jesus. And today is your opportunity to get at the foot of Jesus. He'll cover your resources. He'll cover your dollars. Don't hold on to the little bit you got because God's got more planned for you. Hallelujah. There was a time that came after all things were accomplished. Listen to this. Listen, listen. Y'all heard the term, the crux of the matter? You ever heard somebody say that? The crux of the matter? You know, you got the intellectual people who like to talk and sound intelligent. We got some people who actually are. And you may have heard that phrase, the crux of the matter. You know, the crux, the word crux comes from the medieval Latin. That means cross. Hallelujah. The crux of the matter is the cross of Christ. Hallelujah. Y'all stay with me in here. Stay with me in here. Why is the word crux associated with such a critical time in history. Listen, because the cross of Christ, it truly is the crux of the matter. Because at the cross is where it all was reconciled. At the cross is where it all came down. At the cross is where divine history was made. At the cross is where perfect peace and perfect purpose met up in a divine connection, in a divine collision. So the crux of the matter is the cross of Christ. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, listen in here. Listen in here. You ever heard somebody say, I'm in excruciating pain, you know, indescribable pain. You know, some of us have had babies. Well, not some of us. Some of women have had babies and you have certain things about your body. Some men have experienced it. Excruciating pain. Let me teach you something today, church. Excruciating. It derives from the Latin, which means out of the cross excruciating pain, Jesus being stuck to the cross by those nails, but love keeping him there, experiencing the excruciating pain on your behalf, the excruciating pain of purpose, the excruciating pain of delivering a group of people that he hadn't even met yet, that he didn't even know, but from the cross he can see your future, but from the cross he can see you choosing him today, excruciating pain 
out of the cross. You know, and then throughout history, it is no way to define history without the pain and the crux of the matter, which is out of the cross of Christ. It's no way to define our history. It's no way to work our history with leaving out the cross and the pain that he experienced on behalf of you and you and you. The crux of the matter, it is the cross, excruciating, out of excruciating pain. Hallelujah. You know, people are longing for connection, looking for answers, looking for justice, looking for deliverance, looking for connection. It is at the cross where all of those things were merged and connected. It is at the cross in that excruciating pain that God was able to connect that divine nature of Jesus with his divine plan and bring perfect peace and perfect purpose and justice all together and reconcile it at the crucifixion just for you. Did y'all get it? Y'all get it today. Y'all get it. Listen, we're not telling you not to be vulnerable. Listen, be real, be vulnerable, but be committed to this thing. God is calling you back. He is calling you in. He is calling you forward. He is calling you out. He is calling you in this season because this is an unprecedented time. And so when this is over, we're not going back to what we were. When this is over, we're not going back to who we look like. When this is over, you're not going to be the same. And today is the day that marked the change in history. Everything changed. I'm not the same. Hallelujah. God, I thank you today. Hallelujah. Give God praise where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God today. We thank God today. Listen, people of God. Listen, listen. Verse 29 says, A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant. Do you know the origin of the hyssop plant? Do you remember a little thing called the Passover? Do you remember something where they had to smear the blood of the lamb over the doors? The blood keep you. You know what they used to smear the blood of the lamb over the doors? The hyssop plant in here. Jesus' divine nature connected to the original, the original sacrifice, the original story. And so the blood, it saved you once. It saved us once, and so the blood is going to save you again. Hallelujah. It is a connection. They didn't even know that they were fulfilling what God wanted when they put it on the hyssop plant. I need this blood. I need this flow to cover me. I need this flow to engage me. I need this flow to collide with me, to collide with my life. The hyssop plant, where they smeared the blood of the lamb over the doorpost. Hallelujah. So if they saw it, it would pass over you. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. And so every healthcare worker, every person that's still walking out of their doors, every person that's been affected, the blood of Jesus cover you today. God is calling you back under his blood over the hyssop plant. But you know what they tried to do? They dipped it in the vinegar to put it to his lips to make him drink. Jesus said, I don't need none of your water. I don't need none of your drink because what I'm thirsting for, this is not going to satisfy me. But what I will do, since you need me to announce it, what I will do, I will take one sip so that way I can make this announcement. It is finished. He just took one sip so he can make the declaration. And it wasn't a sad declaration. No, it was a cry of victory. It was a cry of triumph. It was a cry of designation. It was a cry of selection. It is finished. So I'll take your sip because I am now the blood. I am now embodying what God said. I am completing what God sent me to do just for you. The hyssop plant. Listen, the blood covered the redemption, and I promise you it's going to be multiplied in eternity with our restoration. Hallelujah. God, I thank you in this place. God, I thank you. Listen, 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 listen. Stay with me in here. Stay with me. Don't go get no snacks. Go back and sit down. Don't go get no snacks. This ain't no movie. Don't go in your kitchen and get no sausage. You should have got it already. Stay right where you at. We're going to work through this thing. We're going to stay here. Listen, tell them sit down. Tell them sit down. Don't go get it. Listen, verse 30 says, when he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. He said, it is finished. He didn't say, I am finished. Hallelujah. He said, it is finished. But he didn't say, I am finished. He said, it's done. I completed the work, Father. 
I paid the debt for him, Father. I did what you sent me to do. I did it. I walked through all of it. I walked through this life. I did this ministry for this time just to get to this moment. I walked past the thieves. I sat through when they betrayed me. I finished it, God, and I paid the debt for them. I came and completed the work for them. I came and did what you asked me to do. I came and finished it, and I'm excited about what I did. This is a cry of somewhat victorious. You know, he said, it is finished. He completed it. He did it. He done it. It's done. It's over. And so the cry of the human spirit is that that cry, that anguish. And so religion tries to teach you you need to get right before you come with God. Jesus said, I got right because I completed it right here. So I already did it. All you need to do is trust. All you need to do is open your heart. That cry you feel in your heart, that's God saying, that's me pulling on you, son. That's me tugging on you, daughter. That's me pulling on your family. That's me pulling on your life. That's me pulling on your creation. That's me pulling on your selection. Hallelujah. You know, there's a name. There's a name that you have and God is pulling on it and he wants you to realize it when you realize who he is and who you are in him. Hallelujah. He's pulling on it right now and so you feel that tug in your heart. Lift your hands right where you are and worship God. Tell God, thank you. I thank you for selecting me. I thank you for dying for me. You should be on your knees right now thanking him hallelujah because he's calling you back today is your opportunity today is a rare privilege hallelujah today is an unprecedented time in history because it is finished and so there's nothing that you need to do today to complete it because god says i completed it what you need to do today is surrender hallelujah so you can't control it but you can surrender Hallelujah. And so there are things around you that you can't control. You can't control what they say, how they do it, how they legislate. But what you can do is surrender. You can put it at the foot of the cross because Jesus said, I did. I paid the debt. I covered the debt. I covered your ransom. I covered the investment. I covered the deposit. I covered it. I wrote the check and I'm big enough to catch it. I wrote it out and I'm big enough. I got enough resources for it to cover. When it hit the bank, it's not going to bounce. When it hit it, you know, some of you write the checks and then you be, oh my God, I got to get the money in there before it cut. I got to help you up and go, honey, make the deposit before the check comes. Jesus was bold enough to say, I write it hundreds of years ago and it's still being cashed today. I write it thousands of years ago and it's still being cashed today because I'm big enough. I'm bold enough. I'm strong enough. I got enough glory. I got enough power and I'm secure in who I am because it is finished. Listen, he didn't say I am finished. He said, it is finished. And so all the promises, all the prophecies, finished. All the sacrifices and ceremonies, bulls and cats and goats and donkeys, all of that is finished. Perfect obedience is finished. The satisfaction of God's justice, finished. I paid it for you. I did it for you. And listen, listen. The power of Satan, sin, and death finished. I finished it. I said it is finished. But no time did Jesus ever say, I am finished. They had no idea what they were doing because once they took them down and once they put them behind the stone, they started a whole nother whirlwind of events to come. They had no idea what they were doing. They didn't know what they were doing. They were just setting us up. They were just setting you up because he never said, I am finished. I'm just beginning. I'm just getting started because I saw you from where I was. So I saw you from Calvary. I saw your life. I saw your choices. I saw your family. I saw your future. I saw your trajectory. And so I came on the cross. I let him put me on there, but it was love that kept me there because I got love. It's all love all day. And so I let it stay there. I stayed up there. I let him keep me up there. And then I came down, went behind the stone, got myself together, recovered myself, got the wounds right. And then I came out from behind it. Hallelujah. So I can come and say and declare to you that it is finished. I came back from behind it to tell you to your face that it is finished for you. Hallelujah. Somebody help me in this place. When Jesus said it is finished, it was a shout of victory. Listen, I'm going to teach you something in here today. I'm going to show y'all something. I'm going to show you something. A single word, a single word can change everything. If some of y'all been to court, if we was in church, I would ask you to raise your hand to see if you've been in court. You know, you had to sit before the judge. Some of us ain't been perfect our whole life. That's what's wrong with the church now. You're looking around your living room trying to make sure don't nobody know that you've been in front of the judge. Listen, they already know. They know because you couldn't sneak in and sneak out. A single word can change everything. Not 
guilty. Changes everything, doesn't it? A single word can change everything. You asked her to marry you, and she said yes. Changed your whole life. I asked my lovely wife to marry me 20-something years ago. Changed my life forever. She had said no. I wouldn't be in front of you right now. Some of y'all said, well, that's probably good, Bram. I ain't talking to you. Single word, goodbye, can change everything. She turned and walked out. Don't let her go. Fight for her. Goodbye can change everything. But there's not one word, a single word in history, that has impacted our lives and our future and our past more than John 1930. It is finished. It is a cry of victory. Listen, let me teach you something. When Jesus said it is finished, it was a phrase in the original Greek that he said. It is pronounced tetelestel. T-E-T-T-E-T-E-L-E-S-T-A-I. -E 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 Scholars, let us know how to pronounce it. Tetelestia. It is in the original Greek. That's what he was saying. But it wasn't a cry of defeat. It was not a cry of someone who had been defeated. It was a cry of a victorious warrior. It was a cry of triumph. It was a loud shout. Can you imagine from Calvary? Can you imagine after hanging for hours? Can you imagine after the excruciating pain, but feeling the connection of everyone that his life and sacrifice was going to change? Did you imagine him saying, it is finished? Did you imagine him saying it in a whisper? No, he screamed out, it is finished for you. It was a cry of a warrior that did exactly what he came to do and conquer it all. But the tetelestia, it means several different things. Listen, it has several meanings. When Jesus said it is finished, it is a shout of victory. And so the word was used by servants and employees who returned to their master with news that they had finished the task. Jesus had finished the task that God gave him. Help me in here. It is a legal term that judges use to announce that a prisoner had completed and served his prison term. So Jesus made sure that justice was delivered just for you. So you don't have to serve that term no more. He came and made the announcement that you are now free. Help me in this place here. It is a term of accounting, meaning a debt has been paid in full. Hallelujah. I could drop the mic right there and walk out my dining room. It is a term that debt has been paid, completely paid, paid off, done. You know what it feels like when you pay it off that you don't owe no more? We do the mortgage burning. We burn the paper, pay off your car, pay off your stuff, completely paid your debt. Listen, artists use it. Listen, y'all going to have to jump on this one. You know how I know you jump? You can shake your phone or shake your device, and then I know you jump. I can see Nate and Q, so y'all can jump. Listen, it is a term that artists use when painting a picture to denote their final stroke. Hallelujah. Help me in this place. The final stroke has been done. I put the finishing touches on my what? My masterpiece. You know, an artist paints it and fixes it in his own image. You know, Jesus and God have been painting a picture in a frame this whole time that you fit in. You know what he says? That you are fearfully and wonderfully made in the terms. It is a frame, and God has been framing you this whole time. And so the artist finished his strokes, completed his masterpiece. Hallelujah. Listen. He finished it. He finished it. His masterpiece. The pinnacle of his creation, which is you. The pinnacle, the prize, his glory. Hallelujah. His testimony, his evidence in the earth. He finished it with the final stroke. Listen, I'm not done. The priests, this is the last one. The priests use the term when they offer a sacrifice to God. The sacrifice has been made. It's done for you. It's been paid for you. Jesus' death on the cross was the sacrifice for your sin, for your life, for your redemption. He is calling you back today, people of God. He is calling you back. He is calling you back to his heart today. With just one look, with just one look, he finished it. With just one look from Calvary, everything changed. And I'm telling you today, people of God, I feel it today. I'm captivated. Hallelujah. I'm captivated by the idea. I'm captivated by the love. I'm captivated by the sacrifice. Hallelujah. I'm being cultivated by one of the very best being cultivated by my brother who now walks alongside me because he didn't just stay on the cross. He got on the cross, died for me, got off the cross, 
came for me. And so now I can be cultivated because we walk side by side as joint heirs because he's in it with me. And I'm being completed by the blood of the Lamb, completed by the finished work of Christ. I thank you today, God. God, I thank you today. You should be rejoicing. If we was in church, I'd make some of you run. If we was in the church, I'd make Nate play it. If we was in the church, I'd make some of you holler. Hallelujah, because it's just that worthy. It is finished today, and he's calling you back. He completed the work. He did it for you. He did it for your behalf. And so I'm captivated today, God, because you saw me at the very end, right before you said it, when they tried to give you the sip, you said, I don't need no water. What I'm going to need is for you to choose. What I'm going to need is for you to agree. What I'm going to need is for your heart to be turned today. What I'm going to need is for you to thirst like I thirst. I don't need your water. I don't need your drink. I don't need your vinegar. All I need is enough to say out loud and cry and scream. It is finished. And so now let the thing begin. And so now let history be forever change. And so now let everything start. Hallelujah. From that moment, God changed everything. From that moment, from his lips, when he released it, everything changed for you and me. And we thank God today because on Calvary, he looked at me. On Calvary, he saw me. Saw me for who I am. Saw me for who I am. Can't hide it from him. He saw you for who you are. He saw you for what you are made of. He saw you for what you're made up of. He saw you with everything you got. He saw you with all the pain, all the hurt, all the choices, all the mistakes, and said, I don't care. I still choose them. I don't care. I still want them. I don't care. I still love them. I don't care. I still need them. I don't care. I still select them. I don't care. I still have captain for them. He saw you from where he was, and he saw all of it, and he's calling you back today. People of God, God is calling you today. You are in an unprecedented time, and it is now time for you to make your choice, make your decision. Hallelujah. You can't meet Jesus. Everywhere he went, people had to make a choice. Everywhere he went, they had to decide. Everywhere he went, they had to come to the revelation of who he is and who I am if I'm going to walk with him. And hallelujah, he's right in your face today. He's right at the cross today looking down at you. This is what I did for you. This is what I meant to you. This is what I'm doing for your life. This is what I'm doing for your future. And I covered your past because my father is yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hallelujah. And so he said, this is what I did for you because this is how much you mean to me. Hallelujah. And so what will you do? He died for you so that you can get living for him. Hallelujah. There was one that came to die. The rest came to what? To live. Hallelujah. God, we thank you today. Hallelujah. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you glory today, God. Hallelujah. 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 You don't sweat, you ain't said nothing. If you don't sweat, you ain't did nothing. That's why I can't sit behind the desk. You got to sweat. You got to come through your clothes. You got to pull your jacket off. I don't want to do that today because I feel like I look nice. Got my Easter grip on. <laughs> Listen, I got up and got dressed to come to church today. I got up and got dressed because the power of God compelled me today. I was going to wear something totally different, but God says, no, you coming to do business, you coming to meet me today, then I need you to meet me, Brown. I need you to meet me at this place. I need you to meet me at my feet. Hallelujah. I don't care what you're wearing. I don't care if you got on one sock and not. I don't care if you got on the altar top or not. I don't care what it is. Whatever it is, you need to fall on your feet now. Hallelujah. And give God glory because he came for you today. Hallelujah. Today changed everything. People of God, people of God, listen, he is calling you back today. You need prayer today. We want to pray for you. We want to pray for you. There's a link. There is a link that they're going to send out. There's a link coming around to you. Hallelujah. We got people on Zoom. We got people on Facebook. And we got people on YouTube. There is a link that is coming for prayer. You want prayer today for anything. Hallelujah. Most of all today, hallelujah, you want to rededicate your life. You've gotten away from God. You've gotten away from the things of God. Hallelujah. But you've been feeling him pulling on you and tugging on you with everything that's going on around us. This is your opportunity to come back in and say, God, I know you're calling me. I know you're pulling on me. Hallelujah. Dr. Megan is available. She is ready in the prayer room. She is ready in there to receive you. Get the link. Get the link. They are sending it. The deacons are sending the link. It's on YouTube if you're on YouTube. It should be in the comments on Facebook. It'll be in the chat room on Zoom. You want to rededicate your life. You want to receive salvation today. Today is the day to get on the right side of history because God made history for you. He changed everything for you. The reckless love of God 
came for you today, came just for you. That's why you're watching right now. You're not just watching because this is Sunday. You're not just watching because it's Resurrection Sunday. You're watching because God, the Spirit of the Lord, has been pulling on you, has been tugging on you for a long time. And you know it's been there. And you know you should have made a decision a long time ago. But now, in the unprecedented time in history, it's your opportunity. Get the link. Get the link. If you want the link, get in the prayer room. Dr. Megan is there. She's going to pray with you. She can lead you to salvation, and we'll work with you. You want to join the church? Join the church now. You can put in the comments, I want to be a part of Living Hope Christian Center Live. Hallelujah. You're going to be a part of what we're doing. Hallelujah. Get the link. Go in the prayer room. Have, some, have Dr. Megan pray with you. Give your life to God today. Hallelujah. Because giving your life to God today is what's going to matter. Giving your life to God today is what's going to change everything for you because he died for you. And so now you can get living for him. Let him come in and take that pain. Let him come in and be in it with you. He cares about everything that you're going through, that you're in. And don't be ashamed. Now is not a time to be ashamed. Now is not a time to be afraid. Now is not a time to get tied up in your feelings. Now is not a time to turn and walk away. Now is not the time. This is not the time or the place for you to be indecisive. This is the time for you to decide. Warfare. I preached a message a couple months ago. Warfare. Different types of warfare. Today's type of warfare is decisive warfare. Where you need to make your decision. Husband or wife or not. If you're the husband and she ain't sure, decide for your household. If the father gets saved, he'll save the entire household. We'll cover it all in Jesus' name. Father, husband, man, Get in that prayer room and let us pray for you. If you got my number, you can call me right now. I'll get off of this live feed and I'll pray for you right now. I'll shut it all down and we'll get you into the kingdom of heaven. Today is not the day to be indecisive. Today is not the day to be unsure. Because you know what? When Jesus came, he was selected. There was a time when all things were completed. When Jesus accepted the call to come and to die, which was God's plan the entire time, hallelujah, he knew. And now is not the time for you to be indecisive because God wasn't and Jesus wasn't. Give your life over now. Hallelujah. Get in the prayer room. Get in the prayer room and get prayed for today. If you need prayer for anything, we can fit as many as we need in there. If we need to open up another room, we will open up another room. Hallelujah. So we don't want you to put your prayer requests in the comments, you can if you want to. Obviously, we will pray for you. But we want you to go into the prayer room. We want you to go in. We want you to take the link, log into the prayer room, and have her pray with you. Have her lead you right there. All it takes is just one decision, one choice. Listen, you're not in the church now. You don't got to worry about who's seeing you walk up to the front. You don't got to worry about what they're thinking. Because, you know, church folk, we can be very judgmental. Watching people try to decide what they've been through and what they're not. I promise you today, if I told y'all my story, 15 of y'all would cut off this live feed right now. We want to decide and size people up. The only one that sized you up was the one from the cross hanging, looking down. That's the only one you need to be concerned about today. So get in the prayer room. Have her pray for you. Have her pray for you. Get in the prayer room. Flood the prayer room. Hallelujah. Flood the prayer room. If you're not in the prayer room, hallelujah, we want you to give today. We want you to give. Give. Support what LHCC is doing. If you have been blessed and touched by the messages, we've got messages on YouTube. You can go and get the, get the message. We've got the seminar for mental health. We have got the Good Friday service, and we've got the messages Unbreakable and Breaking News. Get the Word of God inside of you. It is vital during this time that you stay connected to your family, to your kingdom, and to your Word of God. And so go on YouTube. Hallelujah. Get the messages. They're on Facebook. Replan. If you have been blessed by anything that LHCC has done, Anything that my wife and I have put out, anything you've seen by Bishop King, Pastor Angela King, any of these leaders, give. We have the cash app, the cash symbol. Somebody put it in the comments on Facebook. Somebody put it in the comments on YouTube. Put the cash app in the chat in Zoom. Cash symbol, Living Hope, CC. I have a cash app. Cash symbol, D-E-I-Y-A-A -A and the letter J. That's my middle name. Means kind or hope. Something like that. Day up. 
For some of you didn't know, it's out there now. There it is. I'm proud of it. Cash symbol, D-E-I-Y-A-A, -A, the letter J, and cash symbol, Living Hope CC. Listen, the church doors are shut down, but the church is more alive than ever. And it is going to take all of us to reach all of us. And we cannot do it alone. We are investing in equipment because we're not going back to what we were. We're not going back to the same type of live stream. We're not going back to the same type of service. We're not going back as the same people. We're going to be on fire. And I believe in God today that the revival is coming and God is calling his people back. If you need the prayer room late, ask somebody, get it from somebody, get the prayer room late so Dr. Megan can pray for you. Is anybody in the prayer room? Find out. Find out if we overload it, if we need to open up another one. We can pray for you. Hallelujah. There are many of you. We see your faces while we're on here. Jeff and Flo Kantz, we are praying for you. Yeah, I'm calling your name out because I've been calling your name out in the prayer room. Dixons, I'm praying for you. Pastor Angela, Bishop King, I am praying for you. Seeking the Lord every day. Praying for your families. Dick and Geneva, I am praying for you. Hallelujah. Brown family, I am praying for you. Bowen family, I am praying for you. Hallelujah. Watson family. Hallelujah. Binky in Baltimore, we are praying for you. We are seeking God for your entire household. Today is not the day to be indecisive. Not today. Decisive warfare means you choose, you decide your strategy. Last week we talked about setting up the things that are not going to be compromised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to decide. Decide. No compromise. There are certain things that you cannot compromise on. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And you need prayer today? Get in the prayer room. Hallelujah. Do you need the cash app? You need the cash app. You can mail your gift if you're not comfortable with the cash app. We have people going down, checking the mail. Hallelujah. Mail your gift. 5517 South Crescent Boulevard, Pensacola, New Jersey, 08110. Did I call the address right, Pastor Angela? I have the zip code wrong sometimes. I believe I got it right. We're not begging for your money because we're moving. We're rolling. We're going. We're doing what God says. So we're not begging for your money. What I'm begging for is for you to get into the kingdom of God. I'm begging you to get into the kingdom economy. I'm begging you to get under the principle of heaven so your resources will be covered. And you know, the preacher always can give a testimony about what God is doing. But I promise you, God is moving. You talk to Sister Nikki anytime soon, you'll find out that God has blessed her with her house. They should be going to settlement. Even in the midst of the COVID, God is producing. So you keep praying, you keep persisting, you keep pursuing, and you keep producing because God hasn't stopped. Because God wasn't caught off guard by none of this. He just hit pause to get your attention. And so today is not the day to be indecisive. Give. So I'm not begging for your money. Not begging for your money because God says you will have what you need because I will supply. But I need for you to get under the kingdom economy. And so don't hold on to your $10. Put it in the cash app. Give it to the church and let God multiply it. Let God use it so we can invest in equipment and reach more people. Hallelujah. We're going out globally. Hallelujah. Living hope should be global. Living hope should be international. Living hope should be multiple places because there's hope that we're peddling. That's what we're peddling. We're peddling hope. Send it. <clears throat> Get the cash app out. Go ahead and play. Go ahead and play. You on Facebook Live <clears throat> on YouTube? You can hear on YouTube. Facebook, you can't hear the song, but we are praying for you, and we thank God for you. Go on and give. We're going to sign off now. Say, you be blessed in Jesus' name.